Hi. Hi. I am with Joe Haywood at our uh, Kazoo Books annual author hop this year. And Joe's graciously every year joined us here. Uh, Joe, you have been writing for a long time. Yeah, since my first publication was in 1985. So whatever that works, did, uh, 32 years. Okay, and while you were still working in the corporate world? I was still in the corporate world. I had three of my, uh, for my first three novels were published then. And I was working on a fourth one, but I got promoted a couple times. And I just didn't have time to follow through with it until I retired then. Okay. So you retired and never looked back? No, I didn't. I've been gone now 20 years from, from the corporate world. Now, you must have had love for the UP because most, all your books, or most of your books are set up there. I, I went to high school in the UP. My dad was career Air Force, and uh, we ended up uh, uh, there in my sophomore, junior, and senior year. And so I graduated from a small UP high school, 58 students in my graduating class. But I fell in love with it when I first saw it, and I've been going back and forth there ever since. Because you now spend about six months up there anyway. We live in Alberta on, on a Michigan Tech forestry campus uh, okay. six months of the year. Now, you do that for a couple of reasons. Um, your books, your main character in your Grady Service novels, Grady Service is the name of your character. Right. Um, he's a DNR cop. He's a woods cop. He's a, he's a DNR a law enforcement officer who is the same as a, as a peace officer, but they actually have more powers because they also, they not only enforce all of the laws that we are liable to, but they also do fish and game on top of that. And, and most of them are federal deputies as well. Most people don't know that. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. These guys can do the stuff that the federal right, officers right, can do too. Right. Because there's a lot going on up in that UP that can there be is. hidden. It's well, true of any isolated area, but I think that's it's true of the UP. That's the closest really isolated, semi-isolated area that we have to where we live here. But you do something that most authors don't. You actually get up close and personal to your subject matters. For 18 years, this was my 18th year, I've had the privilege of being in trucks with these officers, men and women, all around the state for 18 years. So I've got over a year in a truck on patrols with them. And they take me every place into everything they get into, you know, suicides, you name it, we see it all. And they allow me, when we're going into stuff, to ask them, what are you thinking now? What, what are you weighing? What factors are you looking at? So I can try and capture authentically what their, how, what, how their minds are playing the things that they're facing. And that's a huge benefit for an author to have. And like I said, it's a privilege that the state lets me do this. You do carry a notebook then? Uh, I don't usually, I carry a notebook in, my, in, in, a, in a closed pocket, but I don't make notes until I'm done for the day. I don't want to distract anything. Right. Okay. Same, I also use a camera too, but I'm pretty, uh, um, pretty s secretive about using it. Okay. okay. And, I, and I don't take pictures of anything that would interrupt the judicial process, because none of these cases are adjudicated when I'm involved in them. Well, and you disguise them when you talk about them in the book too. I mean, you're, re well, you're I, writing fiction. I, I, I'm writing fiction, but I just use the stuff that I see in a truck as a starting point for creating something else. These are not biographical characters right. in, in any right. way. Yeah. Now, uh, this latest book, Buckular uh, Dystrophy, Dystrophy yes. where do you come up with comics? I was on, on a patrol with a guy who's now a detective, and we went and um, arrested a guy for uh, shooting a deer that he shouldn't have shot without a license and stuff. And we were talking about these people who have this thing about shooting deer. It's, this, it's a testosterone sort of thing. And my, and my now detective friend said, it's buccular dystrophy. And I said, that's going to be a title of a book. And he said, no way. And I said, yes, it is. And there it is. You know? oh this is a disease. People can't help killing these things. They just can't help it. Oh, that's sad. That's it is sad. sad. It's sick. Now, this book is number 10, 10 in Grady Service. Right. But... You're coming out with a new book, and you're doing something that you've never done before. The new book's coming out... Uh, April 1st this year, okay. or 2018, yeah. yeah. And, um, but this is going to be something different. This is going to be a sequel to Buckular Dystrophy. Well, they're all rough sequels, but this is an immediate sequel. I had intended to go to my other series after this and actually started working on it, but my mind got so caught up in what happens to these characters after this book ends that I wanted to see where that played out, and so I, I wrote this book, and it's called Bad Optics. Bad Optics. Yeah. Okay. Joe, thank you for coming on. Anybody? Thanks for having me. In a good thriller.
the up of michigan the trout streams the back roads but don't fish my trout streams <laughs> <laughs> thank you joe for joining thanks gloria